Participating in the General Services Administration Schedules Program is a great way for small businesses to get access to recurring procurement needs throughout the federal government. Additionally, now that it's been clarified that contracting officers are allowed to set aside task orders, delivery orders, and blanket purchase agreements for small businesses, even when they're purchasing off a GSA schedule, and that contracting officers are being encouraged to use the schedules program whenever possible to reduce costs, participating in the schedules program makes even more sense for some small businesses. However, as with any type of federal government contracting, the schedules program may not be right for all small businesses. Before you begin the long process of getting on the schedule, make sure that you evaluate the following three things to determine if the schedules program is right for you and your company. First, you should research how much purchasing is actually done off the schedule in your NAICS codes and special item numbers. Obviously, if nobody ever buys what you sell off the schedule, it doesn't make sense for you to put in the effort to get on the schedule. You can see who's buying and how much by pulling a report from the Federal Schedule Sales Query, or SSQ. Simply go to ssq.gsa.gov and click Create Report on the left-hand side. The site will ask for some background information to track usership, but feel free to skip this step if you'd prefer. Step two is to choose the report format that works best for you. You can click View Example to get an idea of what each report will look like before you choose. For this example, I'll go with SIN and Schedule Totals by Fiscal Year. It's going to ask you to choose a fiscal year, and I recommend that you look at a few. The SSQ relies on self-reporting by contractors to get the totals that it shows you, and contractors are often very slow to input this data. That means that years past are more likely to be complete and that you must always remember that you're seeing a rough idea of how much purchasing is being done, not an exact dollar amount. Once you choose a year, your computer will download the zipped file and you can then open and manipulate the data. Once you know how much agencies are spending in your SINs on the schedule, you'll have a much better idea of whether the schedules program will be worthwhile for your company. Remember. Just because a contracting officer told you that they could buy from you if you were on the schedule doesn't mean you should actually go ahead and do it. Unfortunately, they may have been just trying to get you out of their office or off the phone. Look at what that agency spends in your SIN before you take a contracting officer's advice and pour resources into getting on the schedule. The second thing you have to examine is whether or not you have the resources to commit to getting on and taking full advantage of the GSA schedules program. The process for getting on schedule and then making use of being a schedule holder is very time consuming. Getting on the schedule does not guarantee you work. When you become a schedule holder, you have won an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, or IDIQ contract. Essentially, this means that your pricing structure has been pre-approved as fair and reasonable, but it does not mean that money is going to automatically start flowing in. You still need to market your product or service and convince a contracting officer to buy from you off the schedule. You're still competing. If you don't have the resources to do this, getting on the schedule will be wasted effort, and you'll end up getting removed from that schedule for not meeting the minimum contracting requirements. The third thing to consider when deciding whether or not to pursue a GSA schedules contract is whether or not you're willing and able to deal with the limited flexibility that comes with being on a schedule. Because of the federal government's requirements that it always be given most favored status, you're limiting your pricing flexibility when you get on a schedules contract. You can never give another customer a better price than you give the federal government, period. That means no more family and friends discounts or special pricing for bulk orders if those arrangements would give another customer a better deal than the feds. Additionally, you're required to keep business processes, such as your accounting system, up to certain standards to remain in compliance. For many small businesses, meeting these standards will create a sizable expense that they would otherwise not have. Before going after the GSA schedules program, Make sure that your company can handle the changes that will come with it. Hopefully these three tips have helped you assess whether the GSA Schedules program is right for you and your company. Remember to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your business grow. Mm -hmm.